in a number of spiritual paths. Your deeper questions might find answers in a session in the pastor's study. You're looking for something more, so let's offer you something different. Mary Meek, blessed be, and welcome to another session in a very different pastor's study. And I'll leave it to your imagination whether you were talking about a very different study of a pastor or the study of a very different pastor. And whether we mean the studies of a pastor or the room where a pastor does the studying. Leave that to your imagination. There's plenty else here. Especially with this one. For which I have given yet a title that harkens back to a popular commercial a few years ago, and so I call this episode Got Guts? Remember Got Milk? Well, this one is Got Guts? Now, there's one thing that I've got to say I am indebted in a special way to the Southeast Pennsylvania Tra Transit Authority, SEPTA, in that they give me a place where I can write my script for this and for the secrets in plain sight and to work out what I'm going to do in Mass for the Shutout and something else that I've got in the works. To the point that somebody who's sort of an honorary family member says that she wonders how I managed to do all this family stuff and hold down a day job. Well, it isn't easy, just worthwhile. But I have this little notebook here, and this is where I write down the stuff for this show. I've got another notebook, it's a steno pad actually, that I use for the secrets in plain sight. But I put down three points and they're important enough that I figure I'll just read them out right from my notes. Number one, if you have a tradition, follow it. I think some of you have heard me say that before. Number two, to change a tradition from within, you need a firm basis. I think some of you heard me say that too. And then number three, otherwise, the best way to make change is to build something new. Now what am I talking about here? Well, let me give you an, ex a, an example, a bad example. At least I consider him a bad example. And that's the current Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams. And I've criticized him on a few forums, and I'll criticize him here. And what I've basically said is that he's done so much waffling that he would do well to open a breakfast shop. Waffles happen to be one of my favorite breakfasts. But waffles have no place where principles are concerned. Seems like at one moment he's standing up for tradition. In another moment he is trying to figure out a way of making a place for 
who knows what, even Sharia one time. Sharia, Islamic law. So what's that supposed to mean? That somewhere along the line, Muslim women in England are going to have to be subject to possibly honor death? Look that up, you'll see what I mean, why I'm concerned. And why I can't believe somebody would waffle on something like that. At least that's what I've been reading about him. If I'm wrong, I stand corrected, but I don't think I am. We've got a few other wafflers like that. If you have a tradition, follow it. To change a tradition from within, you need a firm basis. I can give you a few examples all centering around one basic subject. The Declaration of Independence of the United States of America says, among many other things, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these being life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, let's see this, all men are created equal. Now, we can bring that to modern terms and say all men and women, all people. And I believe that's what they meant when they wrote it. And that means that separate but equal, or slavery, is wrong. Denying somebody something or giving somebody an unfair advantage because of race is wrong. And if you want to go into theology, yeah, people were using the mark of Ham as an excuse. Well, if you go into Genesis and read the Noah story and read the story of, of Ham and how he got the mark, and if you go into real Old Testament theology, you'll find that the mark of Ham was actually an excuse for discrimination against Canaanites. And if you have the way of knowing somebody who's a pure Canaanite, okay, maybe you've got an excuse. But if you take a look at some of the other people in the Bible, you'll find that a lot of the people who were given a lot of respect had to have been black. Wasn't Moses married to a Cushite? Yeah. Check that out. So if you're going to make a change, here's a good excuse, couple of good excuses to make a change. Because these interpretations were in error and so let's get things realigned. I don't think there are very many purebred Canaanites anymore. Otherwise, the best way to make change is to build something new. In Wicca and most of paganism, there's a tradition called hiving off, especially in Wicca. Let's say a coven grows too large. Or there are differences arising between people in a coven. It's traditional and can be very amicable for the coven to hive off into two covens. Any property held in common, they work out an agreement. And future relations between the two groups is worked out. And they hive off and move on. Very amicably. No lawsuits over property. 
nobody demanding that somebody renounce their ordination or any of the other stuff that I see going on in some other denominations. No. A very amicable way to split off. Or just plain start something new. Hey, there was a guy who did that about 2011 years ago, wasn't there? 2000 something? Split off from mainstream Judaism. And that was quite a history. So why not? Martin Luther split off. I'm told that John Wesley had no intention of splitting off from the Anglican Church, but that's what happened. And that became the Methodist Church. And all fairly amicable. But in Wicca we have especially, where it's an established tradition and there was a way of how to do it, you can go into Buckland's Big Blue Book and you can find out about it. I've been known to say nobody where the spiritual is concerned forges new ground and gets away with it. Well, sometimes they do. Sometimes it takes a while. But then again, I didn't promise you that it was going to be easy. And you're going to be seeing a few things happening here along that line. This was actually inspired by comments from the, the lady who runs a podcast and radio show called Pagan FM. about something that happened in Texas. A man who was executed in spite of the fact that he was denied his rights under an international treaty. And basically, nobody had the guts to stand up and say, hey, international law is being violated here. And nobody had the guts to say, hey, the United States is part of the is party to this treaty. Texas is part of the United States. Therefore, Texas is going to obey federal law and the treaties that the United States signed, the Vienna Treaty, having to do with the right of consular access to people who have been arrested. Take this a few steps further and we can see how this applies in our dealings with each other as spiritual bodies of people, bodies of spiritual people, groups, whatever you want to call it. And I felt it necessary to point it out and maybe even wear a different robe. And whatever else to get attention and borrow from a commercial, a billboard. Yeah, it may not be easy, but it winds up being worthwhile. And I only want waffles for breakfast at no other time. I might, blessed be. Uriel's Gifts and the Secrets in Plain Sight are sponsored by the Temple of Gaia. At Temple of Gaia, we don't train you to our path. 
we show you how to find and pursue your own path. Above all, we tried to provide a great place to come together and to share. We're located in Collingdale, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, and wherever cyberspace can be reached. To learn more, visit our website at templeofgaiainc.org or our meeting place in cyberspace at templeofgaia.ning.com. Thank you for coming. Feel free to return at any time. We intend to always have something for you here. Blessed be. This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.